Hi everyone, welcome back, welcome to my another playlist. So in the last playlist we were talking about Swell.js and I covered around 25 videos which was covering the basics of Swell.js. Now this in this playlist we are going to talk about Swellkit. Swellkit is uh, you can say a library or a framework or a setup which is enabling the server side rendering using Swell.js. So we have Next.js, Swell.js, Next. These are server side rendered frameworks which are available in different uh, frameworks like if we are using react we can use next.js if we are using vue.js we can use next.js if we are using swell.js then we can use swellkit for server side rendering application and these days we are building a lot of server side rendered application either in next.js and swellkit so we are going to take the advantage of the swell.js using swellkit so let's get started our journey we are going to talk a lot uh, different kind of applications using swellkit the basic fundamentals and then we'll talk in depth about how you can build the application using swellkit from the ground okay so let's get started here we are just going to do a quick recap of the swell.js what all basic fundamental features we have discussed and then we will go forward from there so what we are going to talk about what 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 is Svelte? What is the pros and cons? Uh, what advantage we are getting if we are using Svelte GS uh, for server side rendered framework uh, with Svelte Kit? What is reactivity? Uh, Svelte stores. What are the, what is the man, what is the way to manage the the state in the Svelte GS? Styling, accessibility, and all. So Svelte GS is known these days is known as a magically disappearing UI framework because Svelte GS is not a framework. It's like a JavaScript compiler we have. And if you look at the popularity of Swell.js, it is rising way fast. I mean, uh, this was the most popular framework. I mean, still, no, uh, no, it's not a competition with the React.js because React.js is being used in the existing many projects. But Swell.js, uh, according to the Stack Overflow survey, Swell.js is something which everybody wants to try uh, in their projects. And they really liked it okay so pros and cons these are the lot of things which we are going to talk uh, throughout the journey let's talk about the basic fundamentals uh, about swell.js first okay so like uh, we can talk about the different pros and we have already discussed about all these things that swell.js is more about compilation instead of processing we are writing less code and doing more it is doing a split chunking and giving us a smaller bundle even if you uh try to extract the final bundle size it is very less and what all you need to know is just html css and javascript most of the time we are going to write a pure vanilla javascript nothing no special syntax it just we need to understand some syntax provided by swell.js to write the components and all it's now it is fully written in typescript uh, since v3 so we can take the advantage of typescript with the swell.js it provides the better performance and all these things now how to get started what we need is a simple uh, simple commands npx uh, digit and here we can just create a simple project we can just do npm install npm run dev and you will be able to see your first application running uh, if you wanted to use typescript then there is a special command setup typescript.js and it will just create a setup for the typescript project because for the typescript you need a ts config and tsc compiler with the swell js so this is just a, a simple documentation where you can look into the different examples provided on swell js and this example is talking about the click so when you click on to this it's increasing the counter and this is how we are writing the swell js components it's like a single uh, file components we are writing we are putting scripts we are putting styles we are putting the html all these things together and here you can see we are writing handle click handle click is just assigning the new value to new value to the counter and that is getting updated here now the same code when you write in the angular or the react you can see the the number of lines you are writing in either angular or the react.js and the logic we are doing in swell.js here we are just reassigning the same value to the the count and whenever the new value is getting reassigned it change detection triggers it, it doesn't use any kind of virtual DOM, it just invalidates the value and applies the new changes. Okay, so these are just uh, different different examples you can play with them. Simple to do app, 
how we are uh, playing with the references so here you can see here i'm clicking on to the simple add button and it is adding that into an array and how that is happening i have initial array and this is how i am iterating on to an array using each block each fruits as a fruit and i'm able to print all the fruits and here on the on click it's like a single line expression but what i'm doing here is when you click on to this i am reassigning the fruits to the new value and what the new value will contain the existing fruits array concatenated with the new value and assign this new array to the fruits so it's all about reassignment okay because the changes on the ui screen will happen only when you are reassigning the value or invalidating the previous value okay so these are different set of examples we can just look into this and then, then there are a lot of uh, fundamentals how we pass the data how, what is a state what is a props how we can render a one component to another component right so there are different ways and uh, swell js uses slots so what it is saying is okay this is a model component and here i want to dynamically place my component content because if i am writing a simple model pop up component in the swell js but model pop up can be a confirm box can be an input box can be something else right the body can be anything so i will just put slots this is same as rendering the children into a react component using this dot props dot children and here i am doing a slot so this component here i am putting some model content so some model content will be replaced with this slot okay otherwise you can also put a fallback content inside a slot slot opening and slot closing if you are not providing a slot content then that fallback will happen in this case here i am using and i am passing this some model content to the slot so this will replace with this now how to manage the store how to pass the data we are using the same concept props here uh in the the swell component to manage the state we are creating these writable uh, store derived store and readable store these are different stores we are creating and we are just uh, subscribing to the store changes so we are able to see what is happening with that how we are uh, using props whatever you declare inside your script block with the export those are de by default called props i mean you can use those values directly into your templates okay so there are a lot of other adva advantages like it gives you the the warning for unused styles even unused variables right so it is like highly it is giving you the optimized view and if there is accessibility issues or warnings it will give you right away you just need to see all these things on the vs code okay so spelled with the typescript what you need to do is you need to add a ts config ts config is a typescript compiler configuration update your pro configuration with the preprocessors if you need add a plugin and we are going to start with the typescript with the typescript of the svelte kit and then there we will see this demo we need to install ts config svelte typescript svelte preprocess and svelte checks and uh, if we are writing the client side svelte js then we use something like this right we just import the root component same as the same as the react react app we do react dom dot render and we pass the instance of the component but when we are doing it to the server side that it will be different right because we are rendering the component from the server side okay it's all about like uh, what all other projects are running in the svelte so we are uh, we can talk about sapphire and svelte kit there are many more so the only thing uh, which i see with the swell kit is it has a smaller community and fewer components but as like i'm started using i have started using swell kit and maybe i will put more content so it's like community is growing once you start looking into swell js so you see okay this is really cool whatever i'm doing in the react i can do that in the few lines of code and uh, it is really optimized the smaller bundle size the rendering speed of either swell js or swell kit it's really fast all those things depends on when you start using it you start liking it and you start contributing for that okay so this is all now we will just uh, start playing ping pong with the swell kit uh, swell js uh, extensive tutorial is already there with this playlist i will also provide a link this uh, video playlist is all about swell kit and building the applications with the swell kit